Hey friends, welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. Thank you for stopping by and visiting with us. I just wish we could sit here and have coffee or something to drink and just visit with one another. I, I, there's something that you may not know about me. Uh, throughout my life, I have um, been gifted with what some people call dyslexia. Uh, dyslexia is a problem that uh, our mind is working faster than the rest of us. And sometimes we turn things around and we see things not as the way they're supposed to be. Uh, and and um, there are a lot of different forms of dyslexia. It's it's not like a box of 24, 12 crayons or 24 crayons, not even the 48s. It's more like the 96 that has the sharpener on the back. There are a variety of different ways that dyslexia will affect a person's life. Uh, now, not every, and not everyone struggles with it in the same way. For me, letters oftentimes became uh, a difficulty. Uh, sometimes words were turned around. Saw was was, was was saw. Uh, sometimes it affected me with numbers, especially two digits. I would reverse their order. Uh, certain letters, P's and B's, uh, D's, were very difficult to do. So if I were to write you a personal letter, I would probably write it in all capital letters because I don't turn those around for some strange reason. Another thing about dyslexia for me that has been a blessing is when I worked in photo finishing, I could look at a negative and see it the way it was supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> And, and when I think about that, the, the, what about in life? What if we all developed a little bit of dys dyslexia with the people that we met? Instead of seeing them as they are, we start seeing people as they could become or seeing them in the way that God sees them. Now, I've learned to overcome a lot of my issues with dyslexia. One of the things that I can do now is I can write upside down. I can read upside down. Uh, if I'm helping a child with math, I can look at the book upside down and they can see it in the way they're supposed to see it. And I can just work through it. Um, but back to this main thing, because of dyslexia, uh, uh, not only that, I'm a little bit attention deficit. What were we talking about? Uh, now, I have sometimes I have troubles focusing, and it's just attention deficit. It's not a disorder. There's other people that are ADHD, attention deficit in high definition. No, hyper disorder. But let's not put the D on the end of it. It's just the way that God made us, and that's the way I look at uh, what my struggles with. It's it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just something that I work around and I've learned to deal with. And I understand this is the way that God has made me. Now, another advantage of dyslexia is I sometimes see words and I see words within words. I can rearrange the letters of words and see something uh, in a different way. Do you understand that the word race car spelled backwards is still race car? Or what about how the anger and danger are only one letter apart from each other. Now, there is a word that I want to share with you today that I find very encouraging, and that is the word listen and the word silent have all the same letters in them. You ever notice that before? Listen and silence have the same letters. And I find that very unique. Now, when I think of listen and silent, I also think of a couple of passages of Scripture that the Bible has given us, uh, one in the New Testament and one in the Old Testament. And the first one is the words of Jesus found in John chapter 10, starting at verse 1. He says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. A watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. But when I think about that, it takes me back to Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me, he leads me, uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So with those two passages, when I think about John, the sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. Why? Because he has proven himself, he has demonstrated to the sheep, he's a trustworthy individual. 
He is interested in them. He wants to take care of them. And so when we, he, and he's demonstrated everything of Psalm 23, proving himself to be the one that loves them. And the Bible also says the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And I don't think sheep are ever too far away from the shepherd. They want to be able to hear. As with many of us, as we've matured, uh, our hearing is less than what we would like it to be, less than what it was once upon a time. And one of the problems is that I have is that people will be behind me and they will speak. And when they do, I don't always hear what they have to say. Because our creator, when he made us, he gave us so that our ears are facing forward and sound travels towards us. The sound waves travel towards us. If my back's turned to you, I may not hear you, or I may just say, hmm, if you value the conversation, come around to the other side. But when I think about this, uh, our ears are facing forward. Now, moms are the only people with eyes in the back of their heads. They may not have ears in the back of their head, but some moms have some supernatural hearing. But our, our ears, I think God designed us that when we talk, we ought to be looking at each other so our ears are pointed in the right direction. And I think that when God did that, it was also a point for us to think about that when we communicate with him, when we talk to him, when we want to hear from him, our ears and our eyes need to be pointed in the right direction. If we want to hear his voice, we need to be face facing him because he speaks in this still, small voice. And if there is too much noise around us, we might miss it. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, then our hearing is going to be improved. I feel we also need to clean our ears out, clean out the ear canals. And I'm not talking about some waxy buildup that's within our ears, but sin and rebellion build, build up and they block our hearing. Sometimes we might experience a period of time where we feel like, well, I can't hear from God. And the problem is our hearing is clogged by our own rebellion. And I think part of it may be that he's waiting for us to go back and do what he's already told us we need to be doing. Some people have told me, well, I just can't hear God. I can't hear God speak. I think it's just a matter of getting quiet. But not, it, it, they say, I get quiet, but I, I still, there's nothing. I believe God speaks to us through his word. I think he speaks through an audible voice. I think God sometimes speaks through other people. But to be able to listen requires that we slow down and we pause to yield the right away to another voice. I know I, I've been guilty of trying to finish other people's sandwiches. I mean sentences. Uh, uh, but, but what would it take and what would it look like if we stopped talking and started listening? As I've made these videos, uh, I, I had this crazy thought recently. I wondered what it would be like or if I would even be able to do it without using my hands. I mean, I, I speak with my hands all the time. And, and so I tried it. It was the most miserable 10 seconds that I can imagine because I'm constantly using my hands when I speak. God's word calls out to us saying, be still and know that I am God. And what I want to encourage you to do is to pull yourself into a chair, turn off the distractions of your world, open God's word, read it at less than half the speed that you normally read, then pause and listen. If you're ever reading the Psalms, sometimes in the right-hand margin of a Psalm as you're reading, you're going to see the word uh, silah. You know, silah, what does that mean? It's a Hebrew word, and it means to pause and reflect to slow down, pause, and reflect. So think about what that passage is meaning. Think about what it's saying. And think about how you can apply it to your own life. I believe this is why Jesus, uh, why James, the half-brother of Jesus, could say, be slow to speak and quick to listen. I believe one of the things that God would like for us to do is and, and to, to help us in our hearing and for us to clean out our ears, is to be thankful. When you see law, how can you reflect on what God has said? And what would it be like if you took a pen and pencil and wrote down at least three things that you were thankful for? And then tomorrow, on that same piece of paper, you wrote down three more things that you're thankful for. And the next day, you wrote down three more things that you're thankful for. And the next day, you wrote three more things down. But every day that you add three more things, you go back and review the other things. And you go back and review the other things, and you never repeat the same thing. Keep going back over and back over and back over. Can you imagine how thankful you would be get?
And what this does is it defeats the enemy's negative voice or the noise that's trying to come into your ears. So you can begin to hear what God has been saying. And here's what I know for sure. That God inhabits the praises of his people. So just think about that. Let's get quiet and listen. Or be silent so that we can listen to what he has to say to us. And one of the first things he wants to say is, my beloved, just slow down and listen. He keeps calling you his beloved. Bye-bye.